Shalom. Welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar, together with my co-host Mark Lauren Chow, statewide news service, jbiztechvalley.com. And now, if you could see, he is a columnist. He actually says the Capitol Bureau Chief of the Jewish Press. And here's his article right underneath talking about Albany and government. Right. And... Uh I talk about how uh, the government relates to the Jewish community, or doesn't, as the case may be, so I'm happy to do that. That's uh, been a nice addition to my portfolio. And anyway, now? Now we have a very special guest with us today, uh, Wendy Birch, who's the executive director of the National Alliance of Mental Illness of New York State. And welcome to the Jewish View. Thank you so much for having me. You know, it's um, is she here to check, to check you out? Over I there, hope Mark? so. <laughs> I hope so. I need all the checking I can get. You know, because uh, you know what people say about me. <laughs> no. All right. Okay. Anyhow, uh, what is mental illness? Let's start with that. Well, that's um, an interesting question. Mental illness is is it's a brain disorder, um, and there. It, there's a wide spec, uh, spectrum of different illnesses, you know, from schizophrenia to depression. Um, they now categorize, uh, categorize post-traumatic stress as part of that. Um, and so it's, it's basically um, just like any other illness of an organ of the body. And um, so we're always looking for ways to help treat that. So I see it's a med medical conditions that disrupt a person's thinking, feeling, mood, ability to relate to others, and daily functioning. Uh, just as diabetes is a disorder of the pancreas, mental illnesses are medical conditions that often result in a diminished capacity for coping with the ordinary demands of life. Right, and part of the reason why NAMI was started um, 30 plus years ago was because in a lot of cases um, people would be diagnosed with a mental illness and the medical professionals would blame the family. Oh, it, you know, this was because of your, the way you raised your kid now uh, they were, you know, then now they had problems with their, you know, mental capacity, and mental functions, and that, um, you know, it's it's not true. It's a brain disorder. In many cases, it is but, genetic. But, but can it be a little bit true? I mean, as a rabbi, a counsel, I mean, you're the professional. But like a, a child is sex abused when they're a child, so then they're all having trouble. So they weren't born. Um, you know, or something like you're saying, it's so high wired, you know. Certainly trauma plays a big part. Trauma can often be a trigger for mental illness, yes. But you don't have to have trauma in your past to have a mental illness. So let me ask you, what is normal? <laughs> what is not mental illness? I don't think I want to touch that question. <laughs> but, um, um, you know, one in four people are affected by, by a mental illness. And so... That's um, a lot. That's 25% of people. Really, that really is a is. tremendous amount of... When you say mental illness, though, but I mean, I know that there are, of course, in the Capital District, Capital District, you know, psychiatric center and the mm -hmm. four winds. I mean, what would be, I mean, just taking a pill nowadays, I mean, there's so much pharmaceuticals would get them normal. Again, as Mark would maybe define what normal is, but all right, you know, I'm just saying functional, maybe let's use that word. There are so many treatments out there. They don't always involve medication. Um, you know, there's... Um, uh, cognitive therapies that um, can also work sometimes. A lot of times it's in conjunction with medication, mm -hmm. but um, you know, certainly you're not just going to take medication. You're going to want to go to therapy and, and, and work with a therapist. Um, oftentimes understanding, um, like we talked about a moment ago, childhood trauma actually helps you to overcome a lot of the, um, the um, the, the limitations that a, a mental mm -hmm. illness could put on your, your daily life. A lot of people, again, I don't have statistics, but it just seems to me like 18, 19, 20 years old, maybe college or maybe finding a job, is that maybe stress related or there's something part of the human person that, you know, maybe adulthood makes them snap? Yeah, um, mental illness can manifest itself at any time, but it is most prevalent in that, you know, late adolescence, um, you know, 18 to 24. Why is that? Um, you know, there are a lot of um, theories Started, about yeah. that, um, I'm, you know, and I, I'm not, I, I can't speak to that um, too intelligently. Well, what but about I, anecdotally being in a position that you're in? Did you have a background in studying mental illness that brought you here? You know, here? I got involved with NAMI because um, my sister actually was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and really, again, it did start showing around the time that she was in college. 
And again, you know, we didn't know, as our family, we didn't know what was happening. It took a lot of years to realize that she, that she had an illness and then to find the right treatment. I mean, you know, you can't just prescribe one pill and it fixes it. It's, you know, you have to figure out, it, it's, You're right. it, it's, it's in a lot, of, it's guesswork, it's I think. It's a very delicate yep. balance there in terms of the prescriptions and the medications and, you know, that's when someone says, oh, they didn't take their meds this morning, you know, and you know that they're a little off, you know. But I mean that respectfully. I mean, you yeah, just and, and you know. one, yeah, and one thing about medications is it. Oh, some of these medications don't even really start working for a few weeks, so really? yeah, it yeah. takes that's a little while. Mm -hmm. yeah. but, you know, I mean, that's I mean, seeing it's, you know, under President Ronald Reagan of just institutionalizing or deinstitutionalizing mental people, which you know, I you know, again, as a rabbi, again, I, I'm not like you say a psychologist. I don't want to go. But I am not, so I'm not going to say I am, of course. But again, I do deal with people like that. They come to faith. I mean, that's a major, you know, they come to the rabbi or the clergyman. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, is that a, an issue over here that? Uh, certainly, um, as, me, as much community-based services that can be provided are so important. I mean, um, there are times when someone's in crisis, then they're going to need uh, uh, to, you know, go to a hospital. Um, but... Um, like any person, you you want to have a feeling of self worth, and so to be able to be um, in the community and have a job, those are those things are so important to anyone's mental well being, and so that's usually what we're trying to help people give them the support they need so that they can you know go on and be productive members of society and have that feeling of, so, of strong. So self your so, your association is more of a counseling. That's what, what you would yeah, what what NAMI it. does is we have we sort of are two pronged. One is offering support and the other is advocacy and awareness. So the support side, mm -hmm. we have a whole series of programs that we provide um, from support groups to actual classes like family to family or peer to peer where you go to a once a week for 10 weeks and you learn not only maybe some tools to help with coping, but also how to navigate the mental health system are and where to free? find resources. Are those free? They, yes, they okay. are. Yep. And you're subsidized by state and federal? Um, yes, private? And, and private donations and foundations, yes. Um, and then, you know, the other side of it for us is uh, the advocacy and awareness part. I mean, we do obviously um, stay abreast of what's going on in the legislature and, um, and advocate there, but also just getting the word out uh, awareness-wise as to what a mental illness is. We really want to try and eliminate that stigma. Sure, and it is a big stigma. There, Sometimes, there even with the laws, you really can't uh, get the job you want, even if you've conquered the mental illness and you want to get back on track. Is that the major law that you know? I mean, the well, of Mark's, I'm the rabbi, he's well, the but reporter some, in the news. Sometimes so he knows what happens happening. is that, you know, based on mental illness, you get a felony charge or you get some sort of, uh, you get, you go uh, against the law and you get a problem, you have a problem, but it's not because you wanted to, it's that your mental illness kind of forced you no. into a situation. Yeah. Then when you try to get your help and you try to get back on your feet, you know, they always ask you, well, have you been, you know, you do, do, you, do you have a record or do you have a history of mental illness or whatever? Something and that's like one that. of the huge things that yeah. we're fighting for is um, privacy. So, well, that mm -hmm. and, and the, um, the, you know, the, the criminal justice system right now, I mean, a lot of people are put into jail and they have a mental illness. and. Sometimes the crime that they have committed was a result of their illness, but then also they get into jail or prison and they're not treated. And you know, if you go off your medication even for one day, then you, you have both. to start the whole cycle over you know, again. I could I could back you up because I work in the you know, and I volunteer in the Jewish prisons, but a lot of other people come, so I see a lot, a lot of inmates, and it just breaks my heart because they're they're there in jail. Anyway, just you'd be depressed. I mean, even right. a, the most normal person in the world would be depressed, let alone now they have a mental illness and they're sitting behind bars and they're not getting the proper <laughs> medication and they're associated, uh, you know, they just, uh, almost like we always say, like dumb crimes that they, they go, they sit, really, it's, they sit there with, oh, you want to go, hey, get some money, go 
uh, you know, robbed the, the CVS drugstore and, and they're not even doing it. They're sitting in the back seat, but that's a crime and it's going to lie. And, you know, it's like, it's yeah, ridiculous. And, and a and lot of the state are, is instituting mental health courts so that... Um, really? Yes, really? Yes, that. yes. And that way a person can go through that system and so it's is that a, uh, county by county state is that a state issue or it's not uh, mandated by the state yet so it's the yet. individual jurisdiction and what would it be that if there's a mental like a illness? colony youth court and this would be mm -hmm. a colony mental health court so there would be two different types of vehicles mm -hmm. for depending I mean on if they did a crime but maybe they're mentally ill right. they could see some other correct right. kind yep. of uh, mm -hmm. They don't Instead have to go punishment. in front of a criminal okay. court judge. They can go before a mental health judge or someone, mm -hmm. a judge who's experienced in mental health issues or a counselor or someone right. who and has... Then, and then the, you know, the courts can help them get right. the, 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 the help. Specific help. Right. It's not mm -hmm. one size fits all like right. Common Core Education tries to do, but we'll go <laughs> no, get into that. That's excellent because really, there's a real need for them. There is. I wanted to ask you, because uh, on the website you talk about suicide prevention. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people who are mentally ill, I presume, or a significant number, probably do uh, consider suicide mm -hmm. at one point or another. Mm -hmm. um, then you have ideas on the website as to what to do, what not to do. Mm -hmm. You know, don't be sympathetic, be empathetic. You know, don't tell them this is what you should do. Tell them, you know, just sort of be supportive and coaching. You know, can you elaborate more on those types of things? Yeah, or? I mean, what, when it comes to, to suicide or really any um, serious mental illness, or you, you want to try and be watching for the signs earlier on if you can so that you can get the person the help before they've gotten to the point where they are, you know, really contemplating um, harming themselves. Because it says, um, don't debate whether suicide is right or wrong, or feelings are good or bad. Don't lecture on the value of life. Don't give advice by making decisions for the person or telling them to behave differently. Uh, don't dare to, don't dare them to do it. Right. People, people who are going to take their own lives are they do it because they're just in so much pain. They want mm -hmm. the pain to stop. So really, what you want to do is help them to um, address that problem, the pain, um, whether it's through therapy or, or whatever, uh, you know, treatment that it takes so that, that that's what's going to stop a person from not wanting to, no one really wants to kill themselves. They just, in this instance, they want to stop the pain. And so that's, that's really what you're, you want to address. And, you know, don't make a promise of secrecy because saving a life takes precedence over confidentiality, I mean, and loyalty. I mean, so I just want people to know our audience to know, you know, these specifics that are very quite valuable on your website. So they really should go well, to. What is the website? Nami. Uh, it's um, ours is uh, namiNYS.org. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we we have a helpline at our office. It is not really so much a crisis helpline; is more helping to find resources. So right. if you or someone you know is in imminent danger of harming themselves, you would either want to get them to the hospital, or certainly call a suicide hotline. Does Jewish Family Services fall into your catchment area? Do you refer people then? Um, we don't usually refer people to specific um, uh, uh, hospitals or clinicians or, or anything, but we do direct them towards resources. Mm -hmm. Well, I, you, you know, on your website it says Covenant House, so the help on boys and uh, girls in Boys Town. So I'm saying, you know, if you if if have I, those you know what anything we any resources that are out there, of course, we want to know about it and put it on our website so people can find it. So absolutely, we would. All right. Now you say so you have treatment and support as a button on your website. Also veterans, because mm -hmm. I presume not just elderly veterans, but young veterans with post traumatic stress disorder and other problems. Uh, do you work with the VA? Do you work closely we, with the VA? We do. Um, we actually have a, a program that's been implemented just in the last year or two called Homefront. And what it is is it's similar to our family to family program, which is an evidence-based um, program um, for families that um, is geared towards veterans and their families and service members and their families. And so that's another course that we do. So we do work with the VAs, um, I'm just the state. Uh, maybe you. I'm um, again. You know the numbers better than I do. But I heard that 50 percent of uh, the veterans coming out of well, it was Iraq, now Afghanistan, 
have, like you say, mental problems. Yeah, I'm not sure of the exact percentage, but it, it has been increasing. Mm -hmm. I mean, so many homeless veterans nowadays. And really? what about, that? you had a special segment on television recently on another network uh, about uh, mental uh, illness in, with, uh, in adolescence. Mm -hmm. And could you explain what, that, what happened there and it had to do with joining ISIS and was thwarted when the father informed the police? And, Right. I, I, you know, I, I did um, speak with the, one of the local affiliates, and it was really more about the fact that um, when someone is in crisis and someone does need help, there isn't always a place to go right away. Um, you know, you, you basically can take them to the emergency room, mm -hmm. who won't always hold them, or you can, or if there, you know, if there's threats or something, you can take them to to the police or call the police. And who wants to call the police on a family member? And so, what we really need more of is some of these mobile crisis teams. Um, certain areas of the state have them. I know, I know, Columbia County has it, for example. But um, and I think some others around here. But that way, if someone's in in real a real mental health crisis, you call them, and they're trained professionals to, to help a person through the crisis. Well, what was this family. local story that had an ISIS connection? I believe that was out of actually Massachusetts, oh. where that actually had happened. Yeah, mm -hmm. and did you? Uh, what was? I didn't personally have any uh, connection okay. with that particular I see. story. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, but what could be done to address the potential mental illness in adolescents? One of the things that we really believe is having more mental health education in schools. Um, really? I know that there was a bill proposed um, recently that I think is still it could still pass where it would um, encourage mental health um, mental illness. Um, uh, education in schools. I, we at NAMI actually have a couple of different programs. One of them is called Ending the Silence. And what Ending the Silence is, is a young person who has a mental illness, who is, is um, you know, made a lot of um, headway in their recovery, comes in and they talk to um, middle school and high school students about their journey and what they've gone through. And, um, and at the end, the students are able to kind of ask questions. And it's just it's a really, it, it, it helps to A, let people recognize the signs of mental illness and then also eliminate some of that stigma so people will talk about it so that um, people are more apt to get help. And another program that we have is called Parents and Teachers as Allies and that is a presentation for um, uh, school professionals, teachers, where again, uh, a family member, someone living with a mental illness, can they give a presentation, talk about their journey and what they've gone through, and again, it, it helps to um, do the you know uh, better education around mental illness. And you have uh, how important in terms of treatment uh, peer support groups. Uh, peer support is very important. You know, when NAMI was first started, it was really geared towards the families, and then I think it evolved so that we have a lot of um, peer-run programs as well. We have peer-to-peer, -peer, which again is very similar to family-to-family, -family, where it's um, your peers kind of teaching coping skills and and um, gi you know giving you tools to navigate the mental health system. Um, is peer to peer a five year range or is it a three year range? Or? It's a peer to peer is just a course. It's a ten week course, and then following that, we also have a connect, connections, which is our um, peer run support group. So that would go on. But do you define a peer as someone who's within a five year oh, um, range or not necessarily? It's range? just someone with lived experience. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So it's not really a, because I can imagine that someone who's let's say 19 couldn't relate to someone who's 29 even though they've had shared experience. Yeah, I mean it depends, but... Um, no, no, that's what I'm saying, I don't know, sometimes you have me. an older person, you know, I mean you have that grandfather thing that, you know, to an older father's son, older, why, I mean, you, you, you know, don't if you, see if that. You have uh, schizophrenia and your symptoms are very similar to someone else's, I think that they could make a connection, whatever the age, as to what they're going through. Or if someone has experience, hey, I went through that yeah. also. Well, schizophrenia as an example was treated a lot differently 40 years ago, 50 yeah, years ago That's than it is right. today. That's yeah. true. <laughs> and we have different terminology mm -hmm. that was for verboten now, mm -hmm. but was permitted then, mm -hmm. and you could see facilities and how they change the names of certain facilities. Yes. Mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> just Back like you watch the old movies and you see that they're, you know, how the, 
how they termed it, and you could never get those terms on today's in today's movies. You know, you're not uh, like Martin saying you're not an old lady; you're a very young lady. But just in statistics, um, is mental illness on the rise again? I just hear these statistics that more people die by suicide than by car accidents. This was like, like this is a new thing. I mean, maybe because the autos are getting also <laughs> safer. But on the other hand. To me, it breaks my heart. You know, a young person, that's what I'm saying, they're, we were talking about 18, 24, their whole life is in front of them. They're living in such a beautiful country. You know, there's not like we're in, oppressed or, you know, slaves were. It's a be and, you know, just to do away with your own life, it just breaks my heart. I mean, I have to counsel people also. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know that necessarily they're... I, it, there, you know, there are different studies out there as far as if there are more people nowadays or not. But I think people are more willing to talk about it, which is a good thing. And so more people are are they're Aware, d being yeah. diagnosed, um, uh, you know, better. Um, so and again, you know, I can't stress enough. Mental illness is just like you know, if you if you get cancer, you can't stop yourself from getting cancer. You know, it's kind of the same with the mental illness. Um, you know, there are triggers out there, but um, but it, it, it's not something that you can potentially avoid um, unless you, you go into yeah, treatment. You, you go you, to conferences all across the country, I presume? Yes, we just had our national convention in San Francisco. Which so is, when you hear these stories, do, does it come up with, is it nurture or nature mental illness? Because also some people say it could be hereditary. It, it's it definitely they've been they've been recently identifying genes yeah. um, to that um, for different mental illnesses. So is there this nurture versus nature uh, debate going on for mental illness? I think that the the medical community recognizes that this is a a, a genetic disease that someone you know can get. Um, but as we mentioned before, I mean trauma can. Um, trigger it. Yes. Mm -hmm. But what about children? Also, we're talking about 18. Because, again, a little bit on the personal level, my son is in New York City, mm -hmm. and he actually teaches in a Jewish day school mm -hmm. that he says most of these kids are on medicine already. You're talking about eight, nine years old, mm -hmm. that they need medicine just to sit in a seat and function. Mm -hmm. Again, my heart just breaks for, you know, that a child has to go through that. But Yeah, um... um I, you know, I do know that... Um, I mean, the, a diet sometimes, you know, maybe maybe you can't, like you say, prevent it, but there's ways to so stop giving the kids so much sugar if you know there's... I, I mean, I, I used know. to chew my lead pencils. <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, what well, that's I, your answer. I, I, you know, I won't say that proper diet and exercise is going to uh, eliminate a mental illness, right. but right. It, it does... People who eat right and 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 exercise, exercise it it helps. It does help, um, you know, and, and especially since a lot of the medications that people are put on, they cause um, you know obesity and the, you know there's a really? side effect. So, um, but it, it does it. I I've talked to many many people who are recovering and doing really well, and they almost all of them point out the fact that when they started eating healthier and getting regular exercise, that their symptoms were less acute. So oh, it certainly cool, helps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, excellent. How do you, on a day-to-day -day basis, being executive director of this agency, of this organization, do you cope with hearing all these gut-wrenching stories? I mean, you just must really have this steel wall of some sort. It, you know. it is, I mean, it is very difficult at times, but to counter that, there are so many inspirational stories of people that have, um, you know, gotten help and, 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 and moved towards recovery that, you know, I, I do, the hardest part for me is, you know, I'll take a helpline call from time to time, and I, sometimes there's just, I can't help the person, and I think that if we really could revamp the, the mental health system so that people can, as soon as they're starting to have a problem, can get the help that they need, I think that that would go such a long way mm -hmm. to, to, I mean, you know, hospitalizations are very, very expensive. And we, we could, as a country, we could save a lot of money if we could, you know, put a focus on identifying any issues early so people can get the treatment they need earlier rather than later. Is there any message that you want to get out there? Because uh, I, I look at bullying maybe as being, mm -hmm. a, and that's what my column was about uh, in the Jewish press, might attrib be attributed 
somewhat of mental illness on the bullier or the being person being bullied. I mean, either way, it could be a mental illness somewhere in that mix. Uh, you know, what, what message do you want to get out to the people that you want to make them aware of I regarding think, this? Yeah, I think just that, you know, again, there shouldn't be a stigma associated with mental illness. It's, it's an illness like any other. And so people shouldn't be afraid to talk about it and to get the help that they need. And honestly, <coughs> you really need to take a look at the, the mental health system and, um, and, and fix what's wrong well, with when it. When you say talk about it, you're not saying stand up on the school bus and talk about it pub in an elevator or in a school bus or something. Right? Um, Are you saying talk about it to a counselor, talk about it to a teacher or clergy I think, or? I think talking about it to any, I mean, I don't know that you would necessarily go up to a stranger and start talking about it, but then, I think, <laughs> you know, I, my own, with my own family, like they were very, I'm not saying that they were ashamed, but they, they felt like this is our business. And right. yet, you know, they have neighbors who have the same issues. And if they could just kind of get it out there, people would realize that it's not something to be afraid you know, of. I went to a conference once and they actually was for clergymen, not only for but all clergymen. Mm -hmm. And they said, why are we spending, you know, a free lecture? You know, I'm just saying they have professors telling us because they found out statistics before someone's hospitalized. Who did you go see? They always ask, who did you go see? Who was like your last resort? And it was a clergyman. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to tune us up to saying, hey, man, you're the last mm -hmm. link before they're, they're in hospitalized. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you deal with faith-based yep, uh, help. Have a, we have a great program called FaithNet, and, and that is reaching out to, to the clergy because, as you say, that's who people often go to in a crisis. And... Um, and kind of um, give the clergy the tools to recognize when someone needs help and to point them in the right direction. Good. Well, hopefully we can help over here. And I wanted to. Yeah, hopefully you can. <laughs> you may be getting more uh, than you had anticipated. <laughs> uh, I'll refer back to you. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, this whole thing with, uh, you know, I often look at celebrities, and, the, you know, you have a lot of celebrities who commit suicide. Mm -hmm. Robin Williams, mm -hmm. you know, comes to mind. I mm -hmm. mean, he just heard that he had the early onset of what Parkinson's and he just couldn't think of living life that way but then you had Michael J Fox who had who has Parkinson's mm -hmm. and he didn't kill himself mm -hmm. but Robin Williams hung himself and mm -hmm. you know you just wonder you mm -hmm. know how can that must take so much of a m separate mindset mm -hmm. to be able to just put a rope around your neck and hang yourself that you must be numb to be able to do that, I mean, I just can't imagine. Yeah, or in so much pain. I, I mean, and just think, if he had just maybe reached out to someone and gotten help, he'd still be with us. You know, and he may have been, you know, making us all laugh about and, and learning about mental illness through humor. Right. You know, do you know of comedians who do that? And you know, do you, is there a, a sometimes they say humor is something an antidote yeah. for even mm -hmm. sickness I heard someone words and said I overcame cancer couldn't just humor it so she became almost like a comedian right to, for do herself but for you, everybody is there else. some sort of network with that with humor and mental illness or? not that I'm aware of okay. but I certainly agree with you that I, that would definitely keep your spirits up mm -hmm. over yeah this. you have to keep your spirits up mm -hmm. and I don't know how you personally do it being in the position that you're in. I mean, that's just incredible. Well, I hope we're helping people, so. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I can imagine, you know. And do you, are you from this area originally, or? I'm not, I've been in the Albany area since um, about mm, 2000, so about 15 years or so. Right. And mm -hmm. where were you from originally? I grew up in Connecticut. What mm -hmm. part? Middletown. Is that southern or central? It's, in, it's like right in the middle. It's just it's south of Hartford. Hartford. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yep. And then I was in the army for yeah. about just short, about nine, combat a little over nine union. years. Combat unit. No, I was <laughs> I, I we supported a combat brigade. All right. Very and what, good. Which uh, army? U.S. Army? Or? Yep. Yep. And what were you? Sure. Did you go overseas or? Yep. I was stationed in Germany, and then I was deployed to Bosnia for really? about nine months that or was so. Tough mm -hmm. Did you have a different voice in the sweet voice you have now? 
No, I think I pretty much sounded the same. You were in a drill sergeant, that's what you're saying. He you feels give good. orders, you have to sound tough. I do, I guess. I, I graduated from West Point in 1994. Uh, oh, really? so, oh, you uh, did? Wow. Yeah, oh, there's so something I, special I should have said. It. Oh, well, that's yeah. right. But I, and I got out as a captain. So. Very oh, nice. Very good. Very so well, nice. now you're a captain for the, for <laughs> the right. health, and, and actually, uh, you know, you're doing such great work, and uh, like I say, it's super needed. So also, you know, uh, that's what I'm saying, to a new computer, you know, America could deal without it, you know, if they don't have the latest computer. But there's so many lives that are at stake, you know, in tremendous amount of numbers that just they have a normal good life. That really is more what's, you know, people don't put their, oh, a new breakthrough, yeah. but that's important. So you, that's why I'm saying you're in the forefront of doing good work for uh, people of Capital District in New York, and uh, keep going with, uh, with yeah, what you're thank doing. Thank you for spending oh, a half hour with us. I, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about NAMI and, and let people know that there is hope out there. You're very special for the community here, so thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. you.